Greetings, cats and kittens. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back to Libby's Lullabies. Today, I am going to be reading about a boy by local Houstonian author, Nikim Denchikwu. So, I want you guys to sit back or lie down. Either way, I would like for you to absorb the story. Every morning on my way to school, I saw a boy. He sat there on his front porch until the school bus pulled up. I would wave at him, but he never waved back. I would smile at him, but he looked away. He never smiled. Well, I never saw him smile. When I got on the bus with the other kids, I would run to the window just to see if he was still there. He's a weirdo. One of the kids on the bus shouted, No, he's just ugly, another shouted. Some of the kids on the bus started laughing. That is not nice, I said to them. I wondered how it would make them feel if someone made fun of them and called them names. Their bad behaviors reminded me of many summers ago when I was bullied. I do not understand why some kids choose to be bullies. My mom said bullies are cowards. They are not born, they are made. So when they continued laughing out loud, the bus driver, Mrs. Rowley, told them to find their seats and stop being mean. What I couldn't figure out was why they called the boy names. I wondered if they had met the boy before. Were they friends? That made me wonder even more why the boy never got on the bus. Maybe his mom or dad drives him to school instead. I wish he would just smile sometimes. I mean, come on, a smile doesn't cost a thing. My mom said a smile completes how we look. She always says my smile makes the sun jealous. Well, I just love to smile and it feels great, so I share it. When I finally sat down on the bus and looked, the boy was still sitting there. He always had a book with him while at school, I wondered about the boy. He looked sad and alone. He always sat on his front porch every school day. I wondered where he was on the weekend. Maybe he will wave back at me after school today. But wait, could something be wrong with his hands? Hmm. School was finally over and the boy was still there on his front porch. Where was he all day? Maybe he doesn't talk to his neighbors and strangers. He seems unfriendly. Should I wave at him again or just ignore him? So I did what I always do on every school day when I see him and he did what he always does when he sees me. Ignores me, of course. Then I thought of a solution. Maybe it will work. I hopped and I skipped on my way home in excitement and not just because I will be baking some fresh pie with my mom. It's Friday. And you know what that means? No homework. Yes! When I got home, my mom was already back from work. She's usually home early on Fridays. Hi, mom. Hi, sweetheart. How was school today? The usual. Mom, do you remember our neighbor that I always tell you about? The boy that doesn't wave or smile back at you. Yes. What about him? He has refused to be friendly. And this morning on the bus, the other kids were making fun of him. They called him all sorts of not so nice names. What could be weird about him, mom? Why won't he be nice to me? Why doesn't he get on the bus? Does he even go to school? You know what? Maybe I will stop being nice to him. Slow down, sweetheart, slow down. What did I tell you about how not to be when you do not know the whole story? I said, to never judge a book by its cover, you must read the whole book to know what it's all about. Good. How about we go and introduce ourselves to him and his family, my mom suggested. I was excited. That was the solution I was hoping for. Really? Can we go now? Sure, sweetheart. What did you say we bake a pecan pie today? to share with him and his family. Really? Cool. I walked
washed my hands and rushed to the kitchen to get everything ready for the pie. Hello, may I help you? An elderly Japanese woman asked. Good afternoon. We are your neighbors from down the street. I am Victoria, and this is my daughter, Li Chi. I am Miss Lian. That's my grandson, Sora. I waved and smiled at Miss Lian, but Sora was busy watching the television. Hello, Sora, he said. He didn't even turn to see who said hello. Surprisingly, he waved back. At least now I know nothing is wrong with his hands. Pardon my grandson. Nice to meet you both, Mrs. Leon said. Same here. Can Li Chi play with Sora sometimes? My mother asked, nudging me to go and give Sora the pecan pie. Hi, Sora. We brought you some pecan pie, I said while walking towards him, but he ignored me. Are you surprised? I'm not. Mrs. Leon smiled and said, Thank you. That is so kind of you, and gently took the pie from me. Sora, would you like to play with Li Chi tomorrow? His grandmother asked. Sora didn't answer his grandmother. He got up from the couch and started to walk away. It was then that I saw why he never waved or smiled back at me while sitting on his front porch all of those days. I went home feeling very sad. I was so mad at myself because I judged him without knowing him. I started to cry even more when I remembered the names those kids called him on the bus today. Meanwhile, back at Sora's house. Would Li Chi want to play with me now that she knows? The other kids bullied me on the bus and at school because of it. I remember those days. They were very mean to me. It made me sad and I cried all the time. They bullied me because I am different. Grant was my only friend at school. He was nice to me. But last summer he moved to New York with his family. The next morning, I ate my breakfast and did my weekend chores. Mrs. Leon had called my mom after we left last night. I was super duper excited. Did you ask why? I was going back to Sora's house. I hoped he would be nice to me. We could become friends and not just neighbors. Yet to meet friendly kids in my neighborhood, Caleb, Sonma, and Zachary are my only friends at school. They are always nice to me. My mom was happy to see me this excited since we moved to our neighborhood. I was beginning to wonder if aliens are more friendly than the kids in our neighborhood. Well, that's if aliens exist. Do you think aliens exist? Hmm, I wonder sometimes. Anyway, wish me luck with Sora today. Yippee! Mrs. Leon opened the door for me. I had a big smile on my face. Good morning, Mrs. Leon. Sora quickly got up from the sofa and waved at me. He was facing me when he said, My name is Sora. It's Japanese, and it means sky. Just in case you were wondering. Hello, Sora. My name is Li Chi. It means look up to God. It's African, Nigerian to be exact. Just in case you were wondering. We both started to laugh. Nice to meet you again, Li Chi. I walked behind him towards the front door. And for the first time, we were sitting side by side on Sora's very special spot, his front porch. We had so much to talk about. You see, last summer, Sora's mom and dad died in a car accident. Sora was in the car with him. The police said the other driver was texting and driving. Sora almost died. His grandmother is his only family. When Sora first became blind, the kids at school and in our neighborhood made fun of him. They called him not so nice names. On one of those days, a big kid named Tiger took his walking stick and tossed it around with the other mean kids on the bus. Please give me back my stick, Sora said to them. Sora said he could not find his way around the bus without his walking stick. So he tripped and fell on his face. He broke his nose. 
one of the kids had used her backpack to block Sora's path. They thought it was funny to watch him find his way without his stick. That is not nice. Mrs. Rowley told them to stop, but they did not listen to her. She reported Tiger and his friends to the school principal. They were suspended for a day after apologizing to Sora in front of the whole school. After Sora was bullied many times because of his blindness, his grandmother decided it was best to homeschool him for a while. So, on every school day, Sora would sit on his front porch to enjoy the sound of the school bus and some fresh air. After the bus leaves, he'd still sit there to read Braille, a book for the blind, while he waits for his homeschool teacher. After Sora's parents died, his grandmother wanted him to have a fresh start, new school, a new home, and hopefully new friends. So they moved to Houston, to our neighborhood. His only friend was a boy named Grant. One time, he saved Sora from bullies at school. He now goes to a middle school in New York. They talk on the phone sometimes. I love school. Math is my favorite subject, but I want to be a great musician someday, Li Chi. Sora is a really cool kid, and he really can sing. He shocked me when he told me he can play the piano. I didn't know a blind person could play the piano. How? I asked. A blind person can learn how to play the piano by hearing and by feeling the keys. When we become familiar and have a feel for the black keys on the piano, we can then tell which keys are white. Wow, that's pretty cool. Sora shared so many stories with me, especially the ones of all the beautiful places he had the opportunity to travel with his mom and dad. He visited Japan a few times with his parents. Sora was born in Japan and moved to America when he was a baby. Some of his stories made me laugh while some made me cry. But I was happy that we had finally become friends. Though he can't see me, he can sense me. He waves at me on our way to and from school. Sometimes I stop by to chat before heading home. I ask my mom first, of course. One day after school, I decided it was time to share a few things about me with Sora. My story is quite interesting, you see. My dad died before I was born. He was in the military. My dad was African-American and my mom, Nigerian. They met at an army camp. My mom was a travel nurse at the time. Two days after my birth, the doctors told her that I had a rare type of cancer. My mom was so heartbroken. She felt so alone without my dad around, but she put her faith in God. She told me she wanted to give me a name that will constantly remind her to trust God. And there you have it. That's how I got my name. For many years, I was on cancer treatment, chemotherapy. When I started to lose my hair, some kids at my school made fun of me. They called me Miss Contagious. I was nine years old, and they made me feel so ugly. I was afraid to go to school, play outside, or even look at myself in the mirror. But my mom reminded me of how beautiful I am and the meaning of my name. She always says, we are special in our own ways, no matter how different we look. Every day, my mom and I start and end our day by praying and being thankful for what we have. Two summers ago, during one of my visits to the doctor, after some tests were done, she walked in and said, Li Chi, guess what? I have some great news for you today. What great news, Dr. Dira? Well, you no longer need chemotherapy. The cancer went away. Poof. My eyes lit up and my face had the widest smile enough to make the sun truly jealous. I stood up and hugged Dr. Dira. My eyes were filled with tears of joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Dira. My mom was in tears too. We hugged and we cried. 
Sora shed a tear as I narrated my story. And then he surprised me. He gave me a big hug and said, thank you for sharing your story with me. Maybe someday I will have the miracle to see again. Sora is no longer a stranger to me. We are now more than neighbors. I believe we'll become best of friends. Just like many kids who have been bullied and judged for different reasons, Sora and I are like two peas in a pod. Yet, we are just like peas and carrots. You need to know about this boy, Sora. He is funny, nice, and can speak three different foreign languages. I can speak two. We definitely have so much to learn from each other. Anyway, guess what? It's my birthday on Friday. Guess whose it is the next day? Yes, you guessed right. We are both turning 11 years old. How cool is that? What I like about this book is in the back, it gives you some lessons from the story. Speak out when you were bullied. Don't text and drive. We all look different. We all need at least one good neighbor. And there's also a game, you can spot the words in the story. So if you can, why don't you go to the Houston Public Library and check out About a Boy. I want you guys to enjoy the rest of your day or your evening, your week or your weekend. And I will see you next time on Libby's Lullaby.